And now I would like to invite President Garvey to deliver remarks. My thanks to Cardinal Whirl, Cardinal Tagle, Andrea Riccardi, and Philip Rivers for making this year's commencement such a happy occasion. To the parents and grandparents, brothers and sisters, and friends of our graduates, thank you for raising them so well, and for sending them to us, and for celebrating with us here today. To our graduates, I'm so proud of you. It's my executive privilege to say the last few words before you leave, and I've been talking to you about virtue for four years. So I want to close with a few words about one of the cardinal virtues, fortitude, or as we now say, courage. It's the kind of virtue that makes you think big, brings to mind heroes, generals, leaders, like George Washington, Joan of Arc, Martin Luther King Jr., Winston Churchill. It would be enlightening to talk about these luminaries. We have a lot to learn from them. But I'm gonna tell you two stories about my mom instead. My father died of a heart attack at one o'clock in the morning in bed with my mother soon after their 50th wedding anniversary. We eight children were grown and living around the world. At 6.30 the next morning, mom called and said, dear, your father died last night, just like that. We all flew home and found mother in charge. We ate dinner, we sat in the living room, we laughed, mother led us in the rosary, and she said, John, give me a scotch. I can't understand why I feel so tired. <laughs> when she was about 80, we decided that mom needed to move in with one of us. And there was a contest. We all volunteered, but by common consent, my sister Annette got the honors. It meant moving to Denver, which was far from our home in Pennsylvania. Mother's favorite place in the world was a little cottage there where her children grew up and where she continued to live every summer. My brother Dennis told me about taking mom for the last time up to the lake. One autumn day, she poked around her flower beds and took a last look off the dock, and then Dennis said she just went and squared her shoulders and got in the car. So what's my point? Courage is not just for epic adventures, for generals and saints and heroes. Everybody needs courage to live well, and not just in life's big moments. We need courage in small and ordinary ones, too. Mom didn't start being courageous the day my dad died, or the day she moved away from our family home forever. She practiced courage by getting out of bed each morning to build a home and to raise us well. She learned fortitude in the ordinary challenges. And when the time came to show us how to be courageous in, in hard moments, it came naturally. As you begin a new stage on your journey, Nunc Chepi, be courageous. Start small. Have the courage to get out of bed and pray before work, even if your roommates think that's weird. Go against the culture when it's wrong about dating and sex and love. Don't lose your dedication to the poor, even if your co-workers don't get it. Talk about God. It'll take guts, but you'll be surprised at how many people want to hear what you have to say. Treat people as Christ would. In the small moments were ready you for bigger challenges, the kind that define your character. Each of you has a different path ahead. Some of you will be, as some of our alumni are, governors, senators, makers of public policy. Your campaign advisors will tell you that your first job is to get reelected. Wrong. Risk your job to do the right thing. It's the cause that makes the virtue. Some of you will be business leaders. There may come a day when you have to bet the company to do the right thing. It might be paying your employees a living wage, or competing honestly to win a contract, or engineering to avoid health risks. Do it. Have the guts to choose virtue over victory if it comes to that. Some of you will be nurses and doctors, and noisy ones at that. <laughs> Nurture and protect life. It won't always win you admiration. Too many people today want to put a price on the lives of the sick and dying. Have the courage to defend their value. Others will be scientists. 
Protect your faith. There may be no field where God is more absent than yours. Have the courage to bring him into it. Some will be academics. Have the courage to speak the truth even when it will make you unpopular. Your students and your colleagues will be shaped by it even when they don't admire it. Some of you will be priests, religious, and ministers. The world encourages us to live for ourselves. Embrace your vocation to live for others. Have the courage to swim against the stream. Bring love to a world that needs it badly. Finally, many of you will be husbands and wives and moms and dads. That requires courage, too. We live in a culture that sees commitments as temporary and children as accessories. Going against that trend and making a commitment for life takes guts. As a parent, you're required not only to be courageous, but to teach courage. We learned about courage every day that we spent with mother. She showed us what courageous faith is, how to be a courageous parent, and how to grow old with courage. It's one of the greatest gifts she gave us. You'll do the same for your kids. Start preparing for it and all the other moments that will demand courage in your life now. Live courageously. You won't regret it. Congratulations and God bless you.